Hey, it's Ryan and Crystal here, and we are definitely here at Knott's Berry Farm. Mm -hmm. We're here for the Taste of Calico event. Mm -hmm. It's like a special food tasting event that they're able to have here at Knott's Berry Farm. Mm -hmm. The rest of the park is closed down right now, so there's still no rides because it's still the time of Corona. Mm -hmm. But they opened it up especially for six days just for this event. Let's check it out. Looks like if you want to pick up the chicken dinner here at Knott's, they do have six feet of park stickers over here. So over here in the Main Street, they actually closed it down to traffic over there. And they just put a whole bunch of picnic tables there. It's kind of nice, actually. I wonder if they're going to do this permanently, because I like it, actually. It makes for a good seating area. We're checking out the shop here at Knott's just to see, you know, what new stuff they have. Ooh, I'm really liking this jacket over here. Looks like it's a light fabric. This says Knott's. In very nice print. And t-shirts as well. Ooh, check out this boysenberry cup. So Crystal pointed out this is a like pie squishy that they have. It's like a, a I don't know, it's made out of some squishy material. It's kind of nice, $6.99. Kind of interesting, these t-shirts over here, that's like a, a pie shape right there. That's kind of cool. And that jacket's $39.99 in case you're wondering. I have to show off the bear here in the gift shop. He's wearing a mask. Look at that, it's a boysenberry mask. Like look how adorable this mask is. Oh, that reminds me of the mascot over at Lagoon Park on the Lions. It's just perfect. Crystal found this hat and she kind of wants it. It's purple, it's adorable. Snoopy holding a boysenberry. Look at that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I really paid attention to any of their merchandise here, so I don't know what exactly is new and what is, you know, just stuff I've never seen before. So th that's hard. They also have a Knott's Berry Farm Spirit Jersey, just in case anybody was curious. It's kind of like a tie-dye in a way. And it's $64.99. Has a little boysenberry there. So Crystal just picked up this boysenberry mask, cause you know, she likes boysenberry, so why not? We're out of the gift shop and we're wandering to the front of the park now. So yeah, uh, the mask was too big for us. They actually come with these like face straps that you're able to tighten, but you need a paper clip. We don't have a paper clip. So in the meantime, we're gonna just stick with our mask, which by the way, check out, check out my mask. Please stand clear of the monorail doors. And so if you wanna actually get this mask, I'll put a link in the description for uh, you know our shop where we actually made it. So yeah, check it out. So we're coming up to, I believe, the temperature check area. So they do ask you a series of three yes or no questions to enter the park. Have you been experiencing any flu-like symptoms? Have you come into contact with anybody with COVID-19? Or have you, uh, what was the third question? I don't recall. I don't recall. We don't remember the third question. Hmm. Yes. Keep walking. Keep walking. Okay. So it's kind of interesting, we walked through a room where they had video cameras where I guess sense heat and what your body temperature was and you just keep on walking through and they are able to measure anybody with, you know, a spike in fever. So by the way, right when you enter the park, you could actually see that they are cutting off half the park in length. By the way, this is what the Taste of Calico food card looks like. So they list off all the different options of where you can go and on the back they even have more options of the different items where you can actually get. The number of tables throughout the park has greatly expanded for this event. We are on our way to get a boysenberry smoothie and we're very excited about it. Or at least I am because I love the boysenberry frappuccino that they have at Starbucks here. But uh, we hear it's selling out rather early. So get here fast because you know you want to get one of these before they sell out. So the smoothie entrance, I believe, is right over here near Judge Roy Bean, which is next to the stagecoach entrance. That is not running at the moment. By the way, there are so many good things here. We might actually have to come back another weekend because <laughs> there's just so many things we want to try that we won't get to because you only get five options here. And so there's like at least 12 things that I'd want to try. By the way, we just got here. 
but the line has already multiplied so many people in the last like three minutes. So definitely get here early. So we are at H Judge Roy Bean. I'm gonna get the steak chili here and the boysenberry smoothie. So this is what the smoothie looks like. It looks kind of liquidy. It doesn't look like a, a normal smoothie that you know contains some ice, but I think it, there there is ice in there. And then this this is a steak chili with a boysenberry cornbread uh, in it, and so it looks pretty dang good. Just just look at that. That looks amazing. So Crystal's gonna be brave and take the first bite of the steak chili. What do you think of it? Pretty good. This might be mine now. <laughs> This smoothie is delicious. You can definitely taste the boysenberry in it. It's amazing. I understand why it was sold out yesterday for the first day of the food festival. And I can understand why it will probably be sold out today. So get this first thing if you come here. And in case you're wondering about the boysenberry smoothie, I have not noticed any seeds in this. That has always been the one downside to the boysenberry frappuccino that you can get just outside Knott's. I love the flavor, but the seeds hurt my teeth. I got this hoping that there wouldn't be seeds, and I lucked out. So if you're worried about seeds, don't be. Just go get it. <laughs> By the way, here's what the inside of the cornbread with boysenberry looks like. You definitely taste the boysenberry flavor in it. It is absolutely delicious. I, lo I love this whole thing. Next to it, uh, where you'd usually be able to go underneath to get to the silver bullet, is actually closed. They, they roped it off because, you know, they're closing off half the park. Wait, they do have some hand sanitizer stations everywhere here. So in case you're wondering where they close it over here, it's right before the log plume ride. They have this whole area blocked off where you can't even get to the Calco mine train. Oh, it looks like you can still order a sign to be made though. That's kind of interesting. I think Knott's is doing this really, really well. Um, you know, this food festival could be a huge thing for them during these times. Oh, they even have a DJ over here with more tables. Look at all these tables. I love it. Oh, and they laid out fake grass over here. It's very nice. This is pretty nice. Nos can almost become a 24-7 food festival. What do you think of that idea? I'd be down. <laughs> I mean, they have the table space. They have all the restaurants here. I I'm thinking Nots converts to a food theme park. The first food theme park in the world. One thing I just noticed over here, I don't know if it's new or not, but Crystal said they have been painting stuff. It's kind of interesting. Let me know in the comments below if this is actually new or not, but it looks new to me. It looks brand new painted. So behind me, you actually have the new Berry Tales ride that was going to open sometime this summer, I believe, but I think it's been pushed back. Let's get a closer look at it and check out the newest ride at Knott's Berry Farm, or newest ride coming to Knott's Berry Farm. So it's taking over the Voyage to the Iron Reef building. They completely gutted it. They took out all the theming to the Voyage to the Iron Reef, and they even installed a sign right now Fairy Tales Return to the Fair. Also, I don't know if you can make it out up here, but it looks like they've actually finished painting the queue area. I, I'm seeing Fairy Tales, a sign up there. I'm also seeing the cars for Fairy Tales, the ride vehicles. They're painting, painted a different color. They were, I think, a blue for the Voyage to the Iron Reef ride, and they are now a red color. Kind of interesting. So it looks like they painted a logo on the side of the building. I don't know if you can make it out, but it says Berry Factory. So maybe that has something to do with the ride. Maybe you go through a Berry Factory. I'm not 100% sure, but uh, yeah, it seemed pretty interesting. So yeah, this area back here uh, next to Johnny Rockets and the fountain behind me, it's kind of a dead end area. It's mainly just seating and you know the music venue here with the live DJ. So it looks like we had just missed out on the start of a magic show over here. Let's go take a closer look at it. What they might be using of sorts. Now, does anybody have uh, any idea what a magician's favorite animal might be? Just call it out nice and loud. Black. A rabbit. Say it again. Rabbit. That's right. I brought my friend Rabbit with me. Y'all want to meet him? Yes. Oh, he is just the cutest little thing. I tell you that. He is so sweet and so cute. Come on, buddy. It's okay. Come on. Come on. All right. Here we go. It's my pet raccoon named Rabbit! Isn't he sweet? He's just the cutest. Kisses? No? Okay. Yeah, he's just the sweetest little thing. And, you know, he does tricks too. It's true, he does tricks. Watch, we gotta hypnotize him first. He's a. 
So we're heading to the right now, back towards the River Rapids entrance. Checking it out. Oh, there's another long line. Wow. Oh my gosh, it keeps going. What is this? They're, they're scary far. Look how long that line is. It is so long. By the way, they have a relaxed zone over here. That's where they what they turned the Native American Lodge into, it looks like, is a relaxed zone. They even have a sign up there that says relax zone. It's kind of interesting. Wow. So they have completely converted the old Q space for Scary Farm and the Indian show into this relaxed space. And they even have the sign over here. It says you may remove your face covering in this area, but stay feet, six feet apart. Wow, oh, they have fans in here now. I don't know if they had them in the past. I just don't think so, but it is very much needed. It is very hot today. So yeah, this relaxed space, it's kind of nice, you know? There's not many people here. They let you take off your mask as long as people stay, you know, six feet apart. And it's kind of like the same similar spaces that they have at Disney World where, you know, guests who usually, you know, can't have a mask on for too long can go and relax without the mask on just for, you know, a few minutes. Because with these masks on, you do need to take breaks. That is something I can definitely stress to you, having been to two other parks with masks. Uh, take breaks. to the front. This line has taken like 30 minutes, 40 minutes. You can only imagine how bad it is now because it, it, we've only seen more people get in line. So up next, Crystal got the gumbo with chicken, shrimp, and boysenberry sausage on basamati rice. Thank you for being here, sir. What was it? It's got a good flavor. I was surprised that boysenberry was a little more pronounced than sausage, but... What I can see how it would be real good on that that sausage on a hoagie. And without looking, <laughs> Kevin, I'm moving away. By the way, they have a live so actor up there. here Everyone entertaining great people. Day over there, over here. Hi. How, are you guys having a wonderful time? I'm so glad. What a beautiful So it's kind of interesting. They're dancing What's around here doing? earlier today. There's some other actors oh, really? wearing masks. He's not wearing a mask, but he is very He's high up and far away from guests, so how old is he? it's understandable. So the main thing I've noticed here is that the lines are extremely long. So definitely get in here right when they open, actually before when they open, because they do let you in early. Uh, because every single line is adding up in length. Everything is being so long to wait for. Where if you're not a fan of lines, maybe you don't come to this. Uh, because there's a lot of lines. So we just got finished up with our gumbo. I wanted to show you the line for the first place we ate at. It continues on. It just keeps going and going and going for Niles and Niles. Wow, it just keeps going. So it ends right around over here. And we're going to wait in this line over here on the right for Sutter's Grill over there. So yeah, it's, it's going to be a little while. So I accidentally thought that the end of the line was somewhere else where it wasn't. It's actually over here near the entrance of the park. We are at the literal front of the park over here. There's where we entered. And the line starts over here. Like, that's so long. The line is now wrapping around over here. Amazing. So we're about 30 minutes into waiting in the line here for the Sutter's Grill. It is so long. We're still, it's gonna be an hour line here. It just, it keeps going. We made it to a good halfway point, I think. But uh, there's just so many more people here. Okay, we finally reached the front. It's been about 50 minutes since we first started in line. So we're here. We finally have our pulled pork sliders. They seem pretty good. And this is what the mac and cheese bites look like. They come in this little cup. Uh, yeah, there they are. 
Uh, and there's even like a little ketchup holder up top here. It's kind of cool. This is the size comparison because there's Crystal's head and there's the mac and cheese bites. <laughs> so what do you think of the sriracha ketchup so far? I'm not usually a sriracha fan, but this was okay for me. I might have to give sriracha another chance. They're pretty darn good. You're too good though. This is what they look like on the inside. A little gooey gooeyness. You know, they're not very fried, so they're still like gooey, which is important with mac and cheese bites like this. Uh, so yeah, they're delicious. I was just telling Crystal how I miss the screams here because if you look over here, over here is the silver bullet. And I mean, there used to be a wide vehicle running on it and screams. So yeah, I, I miss the screams. <laughs> By the way, the pulled pork sandwich was kind of good. It was probably my least favorite thing so far, but that doesn't mean necessarily that it's bad. So yeah, moving on. So we're over here at Ghost Town Grub looking at the line. And Crystal had to jinx us. She's just like, oh, this line doesn't look too bad. Well, the food's over there, and the line is still going over here. This this is another like 45 minute line. It just keeps going. We finally found the end of the line. It is probably a 45 minute wait. While we're in line over here, they have one of these like, I don't know, bracelets? That just says, I am grouped. And I love it. So what's been your favorite thing so far? I really enjoyed this movie quite a bit. Um, but also I really like the gumbo. Uh, it's supposed to have shrimp in it though, and I don't care for shrimp. So I kind of left out. Some other people might be a bit disappointed in that. But for me, it was perfect. So the options for Ghost Town Grub are their mini funnel cake with boysenberry toppings and Mrs. Knott's biscuit bites with boysenberry butter dipping sauce or bread pudding with cream and glaze. Uh, I'm going to probably get the bread pudding and Chris is going to get the biscuit bites. So this is what the bread pudding looks like and it looks so delicious. Just look at that. It looks amazing. And then Crystal, what did you get? I got the biscuit bites with boysenberry butter. That looks pretty amazing actually. I wish I got that one. By the way, that bread pudding was absolutely amazing. My favorite thing of the night so far. I would recommend it. It was absolutely amazing. What did you think of yours? Um, I thought mine was pretty good. It was very, very rich. So it was a little bit hard for me to finish. I love the boysenberry butter. If we could head home soon, my plan is to take this home with me. I cannot throw in the trash yet. This is a keeper. It's a lot of butter. Uh, definitely don't eat it as you know, you would like a small snack. I tried that, terrible idea, because uh, it, it is butter. It is butter, but mm -hmm. it would be great like at home on like some bagels or something. Oh, delicious so on bagels. That is my plan if I can uh, get this out here inside. So we just had to go to guest services because they had accidentally scanned our, you know, Calco taste test twice at two different places. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, they might still be learning the system and so they might make some mistakes uh, when it comes to scanning badges. So keep that in mind. Keep track of what you're doing. Uh, and the times of it. Yes. Because they can see the times of when things are scanned. So they were kind of going about it, scanning it. And on one of our scans, we could see it didn't even make any sense. We were waiting in line at that time. And then the next one was 20 minutes apart. It's like, what line here is 20 minutes? Uh, yeah. yeah. So, so keep that in mind. Uh, and go to guest services if you you know think there's been error been made, because they'll, they'll make it right, because I think they're used to it, because they got so many people in there asking for the same thing. We're going inside a store, and it looks like they have some boysenberry merchandise. Hello. Ooh. Some dresses and pants. Ooh, check out that scarf. Pretty. Boys and berry everything. Literally everything. Ooh, even magnets. We do need a Knott's Berry Farm magnet eventually. Sugar cookie mix. 
boysenberry barbecue sauce, vinaigrette, hot sauce. Wow. And, and oh, even cotton candy. Wow. Moving on. The lines have definitely died down a bit since we first, well, not since we first arrived, but since, you know, the hectic middle part of the day. Oh, there's there's even an actor up there, like on the tracks of the, you know, mine ride. Let me try and zoom in. I didn't mean to frighten you. I love you very much. There he is up there. It's you okay. Can see him. It's a scary old man on a mountain. I don't blame him. He had, He's showing really good sense. <laughs> really good sense at this point. Now, folks, are you are you finding it strange that I'm up here? Yeah. Good. <laughs> then that means you have good sense too. But right now, are you, are you guys a couple by any chance? Yeah. Are you married? Not yet. Would you like to be? Eventually. Okay, here, I'm going to help you. <laughs> Sir, look deep in her eyes. Deeper. Okay, that's a little creepy. Um, <laughs> no, I, I think you're in good hands. I, 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 I feel, everyone feel great about this couple? Yeah. Good. Then let's send them on their way with some wonderful music. <laughs> <laughs> so in case you didn't guess, uh, he was talking to Crystal and I, uh, and so when he said, uh, look deeply into her eyes, I went like this. And when he said, look deeper, I went like this. He's like, that's creepy. Uh, yeah, that, that was kind of good fun. It, it felt just like, you know what Disney does, where they have their characters out there on the ledge, safe away from guests. Uh, very enjoyable. By the way, I'm back here at the Berry Tales entrance because we're waiting in another line, but you can see it a little bit better now. How the vehicles are painted red. They have the background painted of the, you know, entrance queue up there. And here is what the sign looks like at night. You can see, you know, it moves and stuff. So it's kind of cool. I'm digging this. I I'm looking forward to this ride a lot. line and they turned on the lights over here so it kind of makes for a very nice setting because you got this like cold country vibe you got all these picnic tables the lights strung up the DJ over there it, it's a very nice vibe here we're almost to the front finally this has been the longest line so far we're at about 50 minutes in by the time we get to the front probably a full hour uh, but they do have another actor up here talking to people down below. So hopefully we'll have some entertainment, you know, when we get to this part. Fantastic. Give them a yoga round of applause. It's like the golf applause. Yes, right. Very nice. Thank you. Yeah, uh, sir, do you want my good side? Hold up, please. On the count of three, are you ready, sir? One, two, three. Thank you so much. Thank you. So it's kind of dark, but I'm shining my phone flashlight on this right now. But this is what the boysenberry icy looks like. And so they put boysenberry ice cream at the bottom, and then they fill it at the top with icy. So that's kind of interesting. And then Crystal, she got the boysenberry ice cream sandwich. And it, it looks kind of good. It's boysenberry ice cream inside two cookies with some chocolate, you know, swirls around it. So yeah, it looks kind of good. So this icy is kind of weird to drink because it's with one of these paper straws. So it's narrow. So it's not like a regular icy straw. Other than that, it's, it's kind of a good. It definitely tastes like boysenberry. Crystal, how is your ice cream sandwich? I, I see you digging in over there. My first impression is actually that I don't care for it all that well. I had actually already seen someone on one of the Facebook groups mention how she didn't like that it. it was such a hard cookie. It is a really hard cookie, and the ice cream is really soft, so at the same time, it's like really hard to get in and get a good bite. Um, I'm not sure if I would recommend this one. I'd have to agree with Crystal. I just tried her ice cream sandwich and the cookie is so hard when you go to try and take a bite of it, it kind of like squeezes everything out the other side of the ice cream sandwich. It's just because it's kind of like a, a cookie press in a way. Uh, so yeah, that if the cookie was softer, it'd be, I think, good, but no, it, it, it's worth skipping.
So we're back to the front of the park and I still can't believe that the line for Sutter's was all the way over here to the front of the park earlier in the day. That was just crazy. So we are all done here at Knott's Berry Farm. And here it is a good day. They kept masks on people consistently. I was very happy about that. Yeah, yeah, and it was a fun event. It was nice to get to walk around a theme park and, you know, get to see it. But yeah. It was weird without the scream. I miss the scream so much. But, uh, yeah, the, the food was good. I wish the lines were a little shorter, but it's good to be back at Knott's Berry Farm. Mm -hmm. And yeah. to get a little poisonberry taste. Yes. But, yeah, that's it from us for this week. See ya. Bye.